Hi guys, what you see below you is the completed Devil 5 inch um, and it's been a really nice um, straightforward build this um, compared to the um, to the other recent Avant frames and I think the reason for that is this the, the body is a little bit longer than the Zero S5 um, and that gives you a little bit of room up, uh, up front and of course the last time that I built one of these I used um, a run cam split which obviously uh, made things a little bit tighter. Um, but as I said, when I was um, looking at this frame, I wasn't so much concentrated on going ultra light on this one. So I haven't really tried to reinvent the wheel. So the components are a little bit simpler than they were um, in my original um, Zero S5 split edition. Um, and I really like the way it's um, turned out. So I'm using the um, Hyperlite 2204 2722 kV mortars. And the reason for that is on a frame like this with slender arms, um, replaceable arms, I felt that rather than going with some big heavy mortars, which if you've watched my recent video, I don't think um, really work too well on a frame this sort of light. Um, so the idea of this is just to put some light, efficient motors on um, and because the, fr the build itself is below 250 grams it'll still be really really quick and very very agile. Um, so the components themselves, obviously we've got the Hyperlite motors, we've got the um, the Devil 5 inch frame and then if I turn it onto its side I have at the bottom um, a Speedex 4-in-1 ESC and this has a built-in 5 volt voltage regulator uh, which basically meant that instead of using uh, a hefty flight controller with a built-in PDB, which weigh you know 10 to 12 grams, I simply used an omnibus F4 and removed the voltage regulator because the the regulator on these runs relatively hot and it's not needed in this case. So I've just used the Speedex 4-in-1 ASC to send five volts to the omnibus F4 and remove the regulator and powered it in such a way that although the board's getting five volts, I'm still sending VBAT to the board. Um, so beta flight um, OSD will still give me the voltage reading that I need. On top of that, I've just used a little fiberglass plate. And the reason I've put that there is I'm using the Speedex, sorry, the Speedex, the Matek VTX. And at the moment, this is running the Matek um, pigtail, which is annoyingly long. Um, so I needed to to move this board, uh, the, the Matic board, a little bit further forward than I originally wanted to do um, until I get another um, antenna. And basically I've just run the, the, the pigtail along here, zip tied it on top, and at the back I've got a full size um, Emacs Pagoda antenna. Now this is the way I'm gonna test the frame out, um, but I'm gonna replace the pigtail and the antenna with either the Lumineer Axi um, antenna or the Demon RC um, V antenna, both of which are substantially lighter than this setup. I mean, the Matek um, pigtail itself weighs about five grams and this um, Emacs full-size Pagoda antenna weighs about, I think, about eight grams. Um, so between those two, I've added on 13, 14 grams in weight. Whereas if I ran an Axi um, with a UFL connector or uh, the Demon RC V um, antenna, they weigh less than two grams. So I would save 10 to 12 grams off the weight straight away just by doing that. Um, I don't think it's needed. I just think it will make for a cleaner setup. And at the front, I've just got a Runcam um, Swift Micro, um, which is just a fab little camera. So if I weigh this, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, probably not actually, but this weighs 224 grams as it stands at the moment. So if when I replace it, when I replace the antenna, instead of 224 grams, I'm probably looking at 212 grams, something like that. And then if you add on another 18 to 20 grams um, for props and a lipo strap, then that's the sort of um, all up weight that we're looking at. So probably 212 grams plus another 
sort of 20 232 230 grams something like that all up with the props on uh, which i'm really happy with that's exactly really where i wanted to be um so it's it's worked out really well um in terms of props for this guy uh, i've got a few options um bear with me one second actually i've got the the dal 5045 v2 which um, I've tried out and worked pretty well on this frame and if I can get them out bear with me one second I'm also going to try these Racer Saw 5038 which are the closest I can get to the Racecraft um, dual blades of which I can't really get in the UK now this is a good overall propeller. Um, I've used similar sort of propellers on, on four inch builds um, and I like these, they're, they're pretty durable. The problem with these is they're quite heavy props um, compared to something like this. Now this prop in a usual configuration I would imagine would be absolutely rubbish because from looking at it, I suspect it's gonna have no, um, no thrust um, in the bottom 50% of the throttle and it will probably be quite quick in the upper side of the throttle. Um, the only reason I'm going to try this is simple because when I originally built this, it was incredibly, incredibly agile, so quick at turning and picking up speed, etc. But the one place it lacked it was overall top end speed. So I'm going to try these out just to see if that gives me more top end speed um, and I can sacrifice a little bit of the, the punch, etc. Um, which I don't need on, on this quad because it'll have bags of it. The other prop I'm going to try is the DAL um, 5050 um, dual blade. Um, the, I think it's the, the Cyclone one, but the two, bla uh, two blade prop. Um, and I would have thought that that was far too big a pitch for these motors, but I saw a video with Justin Skinner and what's he called? Envy Astro or Astro Envy, whatever he's called, pretty good racer. Um, and he flew these motors and he liked the um, the 5 or 5 or dual blades as the best um, props that they tried out. So, you know, whether that's just because he's a very, very good pilot and runs at the top end all the time, I don't know, but I'm going to test them out. Um, and I'm also going to test out some um, HQ V1S, but a higher pitch, the, the 4.3 pitch as opposed to the um the the uh the five or four or that i run or i ran last time so there's a number of things to check out um but the bottom line in this is i'm going to be far happier with this setup than i was when i tried um the zero s5 with the big two three or six motors um, i just think this is a far more efficient and a far quicker setup um for most people um simply because on this you can fly as fast as you need close to the ground and still have plenty of punch um, and the only bit you really miss out on is a little bit of top end speed but of course you very rarely need that max speed for more than a second or so anyway and you know the amount of extra speed you'll get through the cor corners and turning round um, for me at least um, far outweighs the benefits of having more powerful bigger heavier motors so yeah so when I finish this and got the props, um, I'll give it a test fly if it ever stops raining and being ridiculously windy. Um, we'll see how it goes. But in terms of the quad, uh, or should I say in terms of the frame, um, I'm still absolutely in love with this. I think of all the advanced frames um, I've seen, this is my favourite by far. I hope it holds up well. Um, the arms I'm not too worried about. I suppose my one concern would be this bottom plate. Um, and the fact that, that the these holes are so close to the edge of the carbon. Um, but given you're going to have a battery covering that entire bottom plate up, and it is 2mm thick, plus you've got another 2mm one above it, um, I'm hoping, or I think, we should be absolutely okay, but only time will tell. So, cheers for watching, guys. Any questions, let me know. And otherwise, um, happy flying. Cheers. Bye-bye.